Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your internet shop teacher. Welcome back to the channel. And this is episode number 32 of my What Makes It Work series. I haven't made one in quite a while. I will put down in the description a link to the playlist for my series called What Makes It Work. And there are 31 others, and some of these were quite popular if you want to go back and look at some of those. So let's get started on this one. In a recent video of mine, I talked a little bit about these structures, which are called gasometers. I think more correctly pronounced gasometer. I'm not totally sure on that, and I will probably continue to uh, mispronounce it. But anyway, these are pictured here in Chicago in 1906. There's three of them there. There was one in my hometown, and these devices store natural gas or artificially produced gas, like coal gas, until it can be used. They raise and lower depending upon the amount of uh, fuel in the uh, chamber. So I thought these are interesting devices. A lot of people seem to enjoy that in that video. So I'm going to attempt to make one here in the shop. And so that's the subject of the video. And we'll see if it works. I've never done this. And it may be a, an abject failure. By the way, many model railroaders make these structures in their railroad layouts. And in some place you'll even find directions on how to, to make a model of one, but I'm trying to make a working model. And I was trying to decide what kind of containers to use, because we have to have one that slips inside of the other, a fairly good fit, although mine will not be that good a fit, because I'm going to use what I can find. But this is really a little bit too small, although it probably would work, but I want something that's a little bit more... Uh, well, realistic won't be realistic at all, but uh, <laughs> the bigger the better. The bigger the boom, the better. Five gallon buckets that I bought, brand new ones, they're about two bucks each at Wally World. Notice that this one is color coded for natural gas, isn't that neat? This one's food grade, no less. I don't fool around with cheap materials. But anyway, the whole idea here is that one fits into the other. So it can raise and lower. And then I bought a lid also, and I've been thinking about this for a long time, so this is just my aim at it. So I have to make some valves and inlets and outlets and all of that. And then later probably some kind of support mechanism around here, and maybe I'll use chicken wire or something of that nature that I can buy cheap and easy. And you know, what I just now discovered, just this very minute, is that notice that this blue one does not go that far into the white one. So I'm going to have to do it just the opposite which throws my color coating off but notice that the white one goes in much farther so the white one will be the top one and I wish I hadn't taken the bale off the blue one because when that's full of water we'll use water as a seal I want to move it around and I would need a handle so it's going to go together like this but what I have to do first I believe is to cut the bottom I don't have much room to work here. I'm going to cut the bottom out of this one. Because naturally they don't fit together this way. They're tapered. So I'll cut that bottom out and then this will be put onto the top. I may need to use some silicone or caulking around there because I want it to be gas tight. I want to do this safely, you know. It's very hard to photograph something that is bright white. All right, I worked on this yesterday. This is my manifold. I'm not going to do everything on screen. Now, notice that we got the white background, and this is dark, and you can't even see this. Now, watch when I remove the lid. Presto, and you can see it. Contrast. All right, this is a piece of quarter-inch thick brass, four holes in it. And I have mounted, but I haven't tightened yet, these two little valves. But of course, I wasn't thinking ahead, and one interferes with the other. So i got to take one of them apart. You know, there's not going to be much pressure in here, two or three pounds. 
but I still will put a little sealant on that and tighten all these fittings down and then the idea here is that I'm going to mount this manifold right about here with four screws and seal it against the high pressure 2 psi and uh, I'll do that off camera I had all this stuff in stock otherwise you know we already got 20 bucks worth of fittings for something that may well be a failure I like the looks of these old valves no plastic just quality materials I bet these are really old Here's a tip for you. Always start out with more hardware than what you need because you will be losing some along the way. I much prefer pipe dope, I suppose that's not PC to say that, over the pesky tape. My dad used to just use Dutch Boy white lead. Of course you couldn't get that anymore unless you find some new old stock. See that's why I had to take that handle off. Guess what I had to do a little disassembly and back up I had forgotten to drill these two holes in there. Otherwise they were just blind holes. Some of this. Half of it's hard. That was a mistake. But anyway, I've got a messy job of sealant there. And I will go ahead and tighten these down for good. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put this on without any caulking. I do not know whether this will seal, but if there is a leak and the entire basement fills up with natural gas, don't come in here smoking, but then I'll know it's leaking and I will seal it with some of this all the way around. That could be applied after. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and put that on and be done with it. Look at this falling apart. Well that only took about an hour so now I'm going to go over and fill this up with water to perhaps I don't know this level right here I have to experiment with that and then we got an in and an out and then that will go in as such and then for now I'm going to test it I've got this all rigged up here someplace with some vinyl tubing these are quarter inch ferrules and I'll put, well it won't take very much, and you know this will blow off if it's not leaking. So they use a lot of weights on top of these uh, gasometers. And that's what regulates the pressure of the natural gas. So I don't know whether I need 5 pounds or 50 pounds on here, I really don't know. And that'll be a, an experiment, I got plenty of steel and lead to lay on there. So let me get the water in there and I'll be right in some air in the compressor and we'll Give this a try. Okay, these valves are working well and sealing, and I always check my valves by sucking on them. And you can tell whether they're leaking. We got about four and a half gallons of water in here, and since both valves are closed, if the seal around here is not leaking, this should not really go down. It should just go in a little ways, and then, like, really, that's all the further it's going to go right now. So I will open this valve can you see that it's going down just like a real gasometer would now you can see I will need some kind of stability on here because I this is just floating around I knew it would these are small valves with uh, a minor orifice in them, just a very small one, but you can see it is going down. And the first experiment that I'm going to do, and you can see it, it's all the way down now, that took, what, two or three minutes off camera. I'm going to blow in here with lung power and see if I can raise it. This valve is closed, the in valve is open. So here we go with lung power.
that doggone compressor came on and ruined that footage, but now what I'm going to do is uh, put compressed air in here, just two or three pounds, it, it won't take very much. Try to get this in frame. Remember the water is doing the sealing. So uh, I need some weight on here, but I don't know how much, that's a piece of uh, soapstone. That weighs about five pounds. I got a five pound lead here, but I won't put that in. I'm going to put some air in now, and I don't know what's going to happen. That's four pounds of pressure. Can you see it coming up? Whoa, I got a flood. Okay, this is my regulator, what I'm using to add air pressure at about three or four pounds. I'll turn this valve on. Ooh. And you can see it go up. Now, if it one introduced a lot of pressure, let's say 50 pounds, it would just blow up like Old Faithful. Natural gas, as it comes into the house, is only two or three pounds of pressure. It's higher pressure out in the street, and it's regulated here in America at the gas meter, not gasometer. Okay, this is experiment two. Let's see what happens now. I reduce the volume of water to about half a bucket. That's about two and a half gallons. I do not own a pressure gauge that is low pressure and sensitive, so I don't I'm unable to, to actually measure the pressure in there, but I'm going to start adding air again through here. I'm, I'm going to do it kind of fast, but I'm watching the water level where my finger is pointing so that it does not overflow again. And you can see again that I need stability, but I don't think I'm going to build that. That's a waste of time. All right, now I'm releasing it, and the whole idea here is to show you how uh, these gasometers fill and then empty. They usually would fill them at night, and then the gas was stored in there for daytime use. Here in Illinois, most of the gas now is stored in limestone underground at pretty good pressure. Northern Illinois Gas is in charge of that, so you see those wells all over. Well, I don't want to add natural gas here while we're in the basement, and it's real windy out today, so I want to do this in the yard so I don't blow the house up, or burn it down, or kill myself. I don't think it's that dangerous, but anyway, when the weather moderates a little bit, I'm going to go outside and we'll do this in the yard and my load I'm going to have a load and the load is the Bunsen burner which will be connected onto here so I will fill it and then we'll see how long it takes to lower you know with that's a minimum load I know it but nevertheless that's what I'm going to use and I think these weights are sufficient because this big piece of stone here can be moved in and out to help balance it. Alright, that's enough for right now. That was a long enough video. Uh, watch part two here in a few minutes, but it might be days later. Alright, it's two days later and the trees are beautiful. I'm outside. It's a little windy for the experiment, but the trees are so pretty I had to come out here and the burning bush is totally a flame. I hope I don't make it burn any worse. Particularly pretty when the sun is just right. Okay, here's my setup. My gasometer. Notice that I put up four wooden stakes made out of hickory. And to guide the white part as it raises, I have the natural gas hooked up. So let me uh, add gas now and see what happens. And I do have some lead weights on the top. I don't know how much I need. I might have to add more or balance them from right to left, front to back. I just don't know. 
Okay, I added some strings up at the top to keep those in line. I was going to use some fencing, but I didn't have any. It does not require much weight. If I put five or ten pounds on there, the natural gas actually cannot push that up. So I don't know what we got here at the house, one or two pounds. So now I'm going to turn the gas on and watch it come up. The out valve is closed, the in valve is open. And maybe I'll speed up the film. But I'm sure the big ones in the freight yard aren't very dramatic either. It takes so long for them to go up or down. But you can see that it is coming up. And when it's up as far as it'll go without breaking the water seal, then I am going to turn off the intake, turn off the gas, and then open up the out valve and I have on the bench here a safe distance from it because I did smell a little gas and have to tighten up a, a valve stem. I got a Bunsen burner here which I will light in a minute. It's not going to show up too well in the daylight of course. A blue flame just does not. You know that. So we know that the chamber right there is now filled with gas at a very low pressure and it's being stored. What happened there? And uh, remember that the big ones telescope also. I think I'm breaking my water seal a little bit. Yeah, I still got the gas on, I guess. And when there is, I can smell gas now, so it's breaking the seal. Let's see if I can get this lit. It is lit, I'm not sure you can tell. And that's my load. Let that <laughs> represent hundreds of households cooking in the evening or with their furnaces on. And we will watch this go down. So I don't know how long it will take to burn up that much natural gas. Wow, it is going down pretty fast, isn't it? And at that point, I think when it totally collapses, we're going to see that the flame extinguishes. And that is how a gasometer works. Does that make any sense? I'm going to come out in about an hour when it's dark and relight the flame, the torch, I think they call it, at a refinery. It's almost all the way down and the flame will be going out presently. Luckily it's not very windy right now. Poof! And out it goes. And the gasometer is empty. What did you think? Okay, it's twilight, so you can see the gas flame. I have the gas on from the house, pretty much full blast, and you can see it raising, even though the flame is on. Well, when it comes up to the full height, I will turn the gas valve off at the house, and then we'll see how long the flame burns. But from what you see here, obviously, the burner, Bunsen burner, is not using as much gas as being supplied because it's still raising. Rising. Okay, I'm going to turn the gas off. And now you will see the gasometer go down. And when it's all the way down, that will be the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope some of you found it interesting. Remember, there are many, many other videos in this series of what makes it work. And that's how gas, natural gas, and artificial 
gas was stored years ago. It's almost down. So there'd probably be less than a cubic foot of gas storage in my unit. And the flame will extinguish. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now and I'll see you next time.